Hi there, this is Dr. Dell, and I want to talk to you on this video about a very interesting thing. It's really a couple subjects combined. It's the concept of a rational and an irrational number, and also the concept of infinities and different sizes of infinities, and how theoretical math can really become quite counterintuitive and somewhat difficult to swallow. And yet it's something if you're going to become a theoretical mathematician, you're going to be faced with. Well, first of all, uh, the counting numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And then the rational numbers are all fractions, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 1 and 5 eighths, and things like that. Anytime you can take a, uh, an integer and divide by another integer, you've got a rational number. Now, if you write that out in a decimal expansion as a rational number, you will find that always that decimal expansion will have a, rep a repetitive cycle. So uh, once you start going out into the decimal expansion, there will then be a series of digits that will then repeat over and over and over. And that's a rational number. And that's easy to prove. So what about all the decimal expansions where there is no repetition in it? Well, then those numbers are called irrational. And so the, the real number system, we call it the real number system, consists of both rational and irrational numbers. Now, the irrational numbers are also an infinite set, as you could very well believe, and you would probably think, uh, I think common sense would say, that the size of infinity of the uh, irrational numbers and the rational numbers is the same as the size of infinity of their natural numbers, or the integers, because they're just infinite's infinite. Well, that's what mathematicians thought for hundreds and hundreds of years, when they even thought about it. But in the late uh, 1900s, um, actually, in the late 1800s, excuse me, late 19th century, mathematicians discovered that isn't the case. It turns out that the set of irrational numbers is a larger infinite set in a very well-defined, very rigorous definition than the set of rational numbers. But yet that leads to a very counterintuitive idea. Let's take all the numbers between 0 and 1 on the number line. Well, as you can imagine, the rational numbers are spread out densely. You can, uh, it doesn't, you can find uh, between any two points there's a rational number. The irrational numbers are also spread out densely. In fact, between any two rational numbers is an irrational number. Between any two irrational numbers is a rational number. But yet here's the seeming conundrum. The infinite set of rational numbers is called countable. The infinite set of irrational numbers is a larger infinity that's called uncountable. And that's what Cantor proved in the late 1800s. Now that is not, that's hard to swallow. You say, how can that be? Here's a set of numbers between any two rationals is an irrational, between any two irrational is a rational, and yet the sizes of infinity are different. Now, welcome to theoretical mathematics. That is probably one of the first things that's going to be hard to swallow as you begin to study theoretical math. It gets a lot worse than that. There are other things that come up that are much less intuitive and harder to believe than that. But that's what happens with theoretical math. And you might say, well, if i got to swallow something like that, then what good is theoretical math? And the answer to that question is, that is how we can actually keep ourselves honest with our practical math. And in fact, if it wasn't for theoretical math, we wouldn't have modern science and technology. So that's what we're faced with. And I thought you might find that kind of an interesting little story. 